We're all good? On that note. <laughs> I'm going to call this meeting to order. Are there any additions to the agenda today? Brent? No, I'm good. Mert? I'm just going to get clarification on that hot, uh, what, Ontario, East, Eastern Ontario hockey, the procedures we have here. Uh, you might want to wait to do that till Kevin's in the room. Okay. Because Kevin's not here till our next okay. meeting. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'm just, bless you. I'm just kind of confused. Does it apply to us or not? Depending on how you read it. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, we should have Kevin in the room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jen? Nope. I'm Jack? Nope. Good. I get a confirmation of the agenda. Brent? Favor? Good. Yep. <clears throat> Any pecuniary interest to the general nature thereof? Seeing none. Everybody get a chance to read the minutes. Yeah, uh, approval. Uh, Jen, all in favor? Now, we do have one delegation and uh, it will be at 145. As far as I know, they will be here at 145. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll just uh, yeah. try and keep Preston. Just hang out, Preston. Entertained yeah. until yeah. that's <laughs> right. Just, you know, is uh, Daryl joining us or? Yes, he is. Oh, he has. Okay. Physically? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we might have to change seats. Yeah. Find a chair for he, is, he, is, he was not coming until uh, later. Oh, okay. So um, is uh, Jason handy? You can do correspondence. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about I suggest we do correspondence? Is there anything to discuss on correspondence? That won't take long. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay, everybody's happy with correspondence. <laughs> Good. I don't know what's going on. Anything with on correspondence, correspondence A or B? No. Oh, oh, going oh, once, twice, seeing none. Oh, okay. Good. Um, and do you mind report if you want? You have seven minutes because you went three minutes over the last. Time. Okay, I, I totally understand, <laughs> uh, and I only have a few things to to talk about anyway. And if you're under seven, we can get it minutes added to that. the next one. So awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I did 17 meetings and two events in the month of September. Um, it was kind of busy, but uh, very a lot of interesting stuff. Um, we do have an action going forward with um, our rural and remote mental health and addiction initiative. Um, our stakeholders are working really hard to put together a presentation for, for Minister Tavolo with our asks, which is great news. Uh, at County Council, I just wanted to bring you up to speed on a couple of things. Uh, 512 uh, negotiations are ongoing for the rehab of the next phase next year. At this time, I'm being almost assured that it will happen, but stay tuned. Uh, the speed limit uh, reduction was accepted uh, by operations and then went to County Council for ratification. And um, <laughs> the Ontario Winter Games, we're pushing off the decision. I, I guess it'll be tomorrow night at our meeting. Uh, to see whether or not this is even viable. Uh, one of the challenges that we're finding, the biggest challenge we're finding is transportation. Uh, the bus lines aren't sure if they can accommodate. And of course, um, how many kids can go on a bus and the health unit hasn't really made any decisions. So, you know, we wanna make this Ontario Winter Games amazing. And <laughs> if it's going to be sort of a, a patchwork of, of, of games, then Anyway, I'll know more tomorrow night, but that's what's going on. Uh, and um, I had a lovely meeting with Chief Wendy Jocko. Um, we, we talked about all sorts of different initiatives and uh, she showed me her road, which it was once the snowmobile trail. So very interesting. Um, I did have some questions about some flags for Remembrance Day. Um, Annette and I agree it's a little late for this year, but I will reintroduce them for next year. They're actually pictures of veterans with their with their dates on them um, to, for the flags that go this way, the banners, banners that go this way. Um, and uh, and I did the puck drop at the first Timberwolves game. And Preston, I'm going to give you the puck for the very first game of the Eganville Tim Junior B Timberwolves. Uh, the game was on October the 3rd uh, against the Westport Rideaus. Um, I'm not going to lie, guys, I did some smack talk with my very good friend and Mayor Robin Jones from Westport. 
and um, it was an epic fail because we lost seven three. So <laughs> I, I won't be I won't be doing smack talk anymore when when I know the mayor of of the team. But it was really fun, and it was great to see our lads all out there. So Preston, I'm going to give you that for the museum. And uh, I can't take credit for this. This was actually Gerald Tracy's idea. Um, when they when they said you can keep the puck, I was thinking, I'm not sure what to do with the puck. So Gerald's idea was to give it to the museum. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll add to our collection of Excellent. local materials and sports. Excellent. And I did just hand sanitize, Preston, just so you know, <laughs> right here. The arena opened in 1948, and the uh, special event for that opening was the team, uh, the uh, RCAF team, who were the, the Olympic team oh, neat. of that year. And um, Kathleen's uncle, uh, Monsignor Costello, was also chaplain general, and he was the one who was instrumental in bringing that team to Eganville to celebrate the opening. And uh, Sandy Watson, Dr. Sandy Watson, Dr. Mons from Ottawa was the coach, and uh, he was along as well. So it was a memorable event. Very cool. Well, well, there you go. So now you can add that to your hockey yes. collection. If my memory serves me correct, they broadcast the game on the radio, and Charlie Lett was, uh, Charlie Lett was at the big part. Oh. Yeah. He was one of the ones that were doing the broadcasting. I mean, you guys remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Question. When you were talking to Chief, did the road situation come up at all? Did what? The road situation? Uh, the gate? The gate. And yeah, the, the agreement right now is that the gate will stay open for the winter. For the winter. Yeah. To give us some time to figure out what to do with the Western Tract. And I got it as a note for Jason, because it's not in his report. I want to ask, talk to Jason about that tract when he's here today. Yeah. Yeah, did we talk to, I don't know if we talked to Montre at all about the tract? No, I don't, that's what I was gonna ask. Um, the one thing I've been, you know, I, I don't want to use COVID as an excuse, but unfortunately, um, youth programming has really taken a hit as we all know, right? I mean, this is the reason that we want our parks open and our arena open and all of our amenities open. So I, I've had a couple of people reach out about youth programming. So what I've asked them to do is write us a letter and we can discuss it with Kevin when he's at our next meeting. I think that's probably the, the best way to go about that. And that's my report. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thanks, Jen. You're up next, EGC. I can do an EGC update. Uh, actually, uh, I'll have to ask Jack what happened there with the barbarian stuff there. Did we get that all fixed up? All turbines running yet? No, uh, he's, he has the shaft down in uh, his shop. He's getting the rework done on it. He also had the, when we took the part at the bottom, that's the shaft that has the double regulator part on it. And the bottom linkage, I recommended that he replace it because some of the holes are oversized such that uh, two of the pins, the cotter pins are slipping right through. So he's got the pins coming. He's scheduled to bring that back probably first of next week and put it back in. Um, with the water that we've had over the weekend, we still probably didn't have enough yet to. Oh, yeah. Or we, we did have enough we to run the dirt. That's why the gate's open right now. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why the gate's open right now because. Uh, because it stay with I'm right now I'm within you know, seven meter of it. Okay, so that did help and got things yeah. going. Yeah, so we we have two units running right now, so we're we're making an excess of uh, ten thousand kilowatts a day. Oh, good. wow! Yeah, it'd be nice to have that so, third turbine then. Yeah, third so, turbine will be up around fifteen. Yes. So basically, what you're telling us was the rest of us were like. Oh, it's raining on the weekend, but Jack was going, yay, it's raining on the weekend. <laughs> and, and I hope the weather forecast is wrong for my personal being, but uh, for the long weekend looks like it's supposed to be wet again. Yeah, yes. Yes. Did, they, uh, did they provide a timeline on? When, on the uh, end? Yeah. He's planning on bringing it down next week. Oh, so okay. it should be, oh, so, so we should worst. be putting it back in. That's what I told you. We were planning, we were hitting for the the third week in October to be yes, yes, that's right. We've still got some blocks that they've got around Lake and Golden Lake, right? Yeah, uh, Golden Lake currently right now, I believe, is sitting at 10. 
Well, so there's 10 logs that will have to come out. The bottom six really doesn't do too much because that's you're at the lay of the land, the mercy of the, the stone and coming from the lake to it. So the bottom six don't have much of an influence, but the top four will. Mm -hmm. And Round Lake, don't go on, but I think there's around 12 logs there. The goal is there to get down to around four, three or four. But that so we're third following, unit. So we're following, <laughs> sorry? Get that third unit. <laughs> yeah, so we're following the money is coming down. So now, okay. Oh, that's good, yeah. yeah. If you go on the RPG site, you can see every Monday he updates the water graphs. Cool. And that shows you the line. Gold make it a little high right now, but, but it's well within the limits. So. Yes. Yeah. So there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So uh, we might as well go ahead to carry on. I see Daryl did come in, but uh, he's not in the room yet so then he comes but we can uh yeah he's in the back there so because three and four for this evening yeah so yeah we're done for that. <laughs> uh, and we still have our delegation still isn't around i uh -huh. take it so do you want to bring daryl in if you're there he's in the back corner and sandra's there so there's no questions on three or four because four isn't i didn't i didn't have to bring the bylaws back Evening, I wanted to sort of make sure the council was okay with it before we brought it back. Number four. Number four, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. And there's an opportunity there. Um, if our ask is accepted by Minister Tolo, there's opportunity for a space for uh, mental health in in the night. Preston, if I don't mind, uh, or if you don't mind, uh, maybe I'll get you over to the sure. sure. And the no, uh, and media seats for now. Let's go bring Daryl up. Like all the other costs that. are going to go up, so it ends up compensating fine. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Hey, hey, Darryl. Darryl. Hi, Daryl. Daryl, how's it going? Oh, let's go. Let's go. Okay. 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 So I guess we haven't been here for a while. Still don't have a whole lot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going okay. Um, oh, I found 49 bonus share. You wow. have. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Gill. Oh, God. Um, I get my uh, my sister and sister-in-law are in the car and they're just parking okay can they come in and we take some chairs at the back yes and i'll bring in the, the park absolutely so daryl to go ahead and finish yeah okay yeah, yeah. yeah. anyway we, so, we can run this boat without the captain there we uh we got our, our four the meters installed this past month so that was a really big thing um, it was fine. They were still working fine, but when you lay down, it causes us a lot of grief. So mm -hmm. uh, we got that done, and another big job we got done is we have to put a, a new stem on our valve that lets the water in out of the river. So it was uh, a fair task for you guys to do that. Thirty three feet down. Thirty three. You had to pump oxygen down. So. Well, we pump. We always pump fresh air down. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's a good wow. idea. Wow. Yeah, and he keeps a meter with him so that he can uh, monitor. The yeah. Thing. So and he never gets uh, untied, so we can crank him. Yeah. Hoist him back up whenever the time comes. Wow. We get How often is that that that's been done? That's the first time it's been done in thirty-five years. Oh, yeah. 30 years oh. Still, so it makes so makes sense. And we won't have to worry about the next. Was was gonna gonna say. Say. <laughs> on the stem, you said? Just the stem. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, and uh, it wasn't even stainless the last time. Oh, it was um, uh, galvanized. Galvanized. Yeah, so we put stainless in now. Stainless pins right. and everything. So right. So it should be good for a while. It should be good for quite. Another time. thirty-five at least. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So we have a whole bunch more of them to do, but they're all little short ones, like maybe twenty-five cool. feet, twenty feet. I'm gonna say we had a shorter so, door. Oh my goodness! Where do they have Just shorter. Just shorter. Just all through the path doors between the two, between the tanks. Okay, just so we can isolate them. Oh, yeah. Like also, yeah, if, if there's a situation, you can turn them off. Well, yeah, well, my can shut one off and clean them. They need to be clean. Oh, so, right. Uh, we're going to gradually change change them as we uh, 
get in to change the tanks, clean the tanks. So, so there's not flow meter that's that's based oh. on the requirement that you have to follow. Right? Yes. Do you have to keep a record of that for like the bunch of river management plan and stuff? Do you have your spec of how much you can pull out, right? Yes. Volume wise? Yes. The MOE checks that every year. Yeah. Because yeah. theoretically, like to pull out, you should be putting back. Because because your spec of what you can. Yeah. Yeah. Take yeah. So, okay, yeah, because I'm just going to see that they have their. Supposed to be every five years. Well, in 2004, they're just doing it this year, and I noticed there's a spec requirement. Yeah, but probably until we're dramatically higher, that these are such a like low on our water. Can just, oh, yeah, we yeah. Sure. And then our plant would never pull, it won't pull that much out. No, no. They're, we're way over range. Yeah, yeah, for the numbers. Yeah. yeah. To, to make the water safe. Yeah. 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 They'll, yeah. they'll accept it. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Thank you, Daryl. Okay. Darryl. Darryl. So if I may, Mr. Chair, this is uh, Mr. Gill and his sister, sister and sister-in-law. Sister. That's right. Excellent. Lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. And Mr. Gill, this is Preston O'Grady. Preston is the oh, curator hello. of our I museum. I know you, Preston. Yeah. How are you? So uh, I think maybe I'll get you and Mr. Gill up here and he can present it to you. And do you have any history on this, Preston? I don't have a history. I think uh, David is going to um, give us the history. Uh, Wonder S Sister Di has, has a bit, and I think she'd love to say a few words. Absolutely, sure, please do. I would love to say a few words. <laughs> <laughs> Except that I'm this is my sister Di, and she doesn't want to say anything. <laughs> and we, um, we had such a good uh, trip from Ottawa. It was really beautiful countryside and so um, lovely farmland. And it was really quite quite a lovely drive. Well, you've caught us in a beautiful visit. time for the leaves as well. Thank you, part. Oh, and they're yeah. just changing oh, yeah. up. There are lots of reds and oranges. And uh, we've done quite a lot of reading about the Egan family. And uh, I'm really delighted to be an ancestor of uh, John and Henry. And it was such an exciting time that they had when they uh, when uh, John started the sawmill and the first mill and on the Bonsha River, and then promoted the uh, lumber business uh, on the Ottawa River it was the most important uh, lumber lumber uh, involvement at that time. And I just read this morning that uh, he had 1,600 horses in the wintertime <laughs> that brought the, the lumber out from the forests and everything. I couldn't believe it. Wow. 1,600 horses were in on his payroll, so to speak. He had to feed them, and give them hay, and all that kind of thing. It was quite an amazing uh, fact. Anyway, thank you very much for receiving us here, and it's a big honor well, for us. The honor is ours. Um, when Mr. Gill reached out, like I couldn't believe it. And I knew that Preston was actually the perfect person to accept it because I know that he's going to take good care of it. Um, so should, you, um, should, should I carry it and shake his hand? Yes, <laughs> I think so. We'll get a photo. It's, it's quite something. It, I think I think it is exceptional. Yeah, it is. Wow, and it's heavy. Yeah. And it's heavy. Yeah. So, oh, Preston, we've met. We've met. You're very welcome, and I don't know where you want to. Uh, Maybe just put it on the oh, yeah, leave it against desk. the desk yeah. there and then get them to stand ahead of it. Oh, 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 here. oh. 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 I think it's right here. I, oh my god, <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> now I don't know your sister in just said, Don't drop it now. I'm really very there. happy oh. to get rid of it. Well, that's fine. Pardon me, that's what I'm just saying. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should say a couple of words just, just to tell you how we got it here, because it wasn't it wasn't easy. And uh, Madam Mayor and gang, uh, this all started about uh, 
three years ago when I couldn't sleep at night and I started thinking about this damn painting and how I was uh, going to pass it on to someone who would really like it. And um, so I said, well, the obvious thing to do is to get hold of Ail the mayor Aylmer and she'd be very happy to have it. I mean, you know, because John Egan was the first mayor of Aylmer. So anyway, uh, I got hold of her, a Mrs. Larrabee. And, uh, and then COVID-19 came along and so everything fell apart. Nothing happened at all. But then about a month ago, I said, well, you know, you, you, you should do more, Gail. You should do more. And so I, uh, I drove to Elmer to try to find Mrs. Larrabee. And of course, there's no mayor of Elmer anymore. She said, I, I met a lady who was in this big building, which was completely lit, but no one was in it. <laughs> and, uh, and she said, I'm going to the Louvre. And I said, oh, well, maybe you could ask, you know, tell me a question. I said, I'm looking for the mayor of Aylmer. And she said, well, there's, there's no more male mayor of Aylmer. You have to go to the mayor of Gatineau. So I said, well, where's that? And then I found out it was, it was right in Hull. So I turned around and went back and found the office of the mayor of Gatineau. And I left him my name and number. Oh, he said, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. And then I waited about six weeks and never got a call. And so I said, I really, uh, I really got to do more. And then I said, I'm going to call the mayor of Eganville. And then <laughs> it all came together. And, uh, and, and there it is. And I guess really the reason I ended up with it is that I am the, uh, uh, the great, great nephew of John Egan. And, uh, and I guess this came to me from my family estate. And uh, I've had it with me ever since. And I'd love to pass it to you. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you so you. much. Oh, my gosh. Can we get a photo of um, Mr. Gill and his sister and Preston? And Preston, you should, you should take this lovely family and show them our museum. Oh, we'd love, yeah, love yeah. to see where would you think would be a good spot there. I don't know. Where would you hold it up and you guys can see where would you put them up on the table? Or up on the chair? Good, everyone. Let's get a close up of me on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Whoa. That's perfect. Thank you. I think we're through. <laughs> I, I think Preston just wanted to say a few words right. and then we'll we'll send you down to the museum with Preston. Preston, don't forget the puck. Indeed. <laughs> I don't want to be chasing her all around Bunnishir Valley. <laughs> John Egan came to Canada in 1830 and he uh, saw a lot of timber operations. He particularly was interested in the ones on the Quebec side of the Ottawa River in the Clarendon Township. And if, you, if you're on your way from here to Shovel, you cross at, uh, at Chenault, the Federal Dam, then uh, turn right on 148 and you will come to Shovel. So that was the area that John got his experience with the timber industry. And he uh, really fell in love with the timber industry and decided he would even start his own business. So he did that, John Egan and Company, and uh, it was just a, a full blast forward from there because that was the time when the background was, uh, in the political sense, 
England was settling with Napoleon. England had been cut off from their wood in the continent by Napoleon, and they were desperate to get wood to be able to repair their ships, but that was the force that kept them alive and kept them well respected throughout the empire. So when they settled with Napoleon, things changed in the Ottawa Valley because they had set up here to get their wood. And the square timber that went down our rivers was heading to England to support the Navy so that they could defend themselves. But they realized at the same time that this was a wonderful market opportunity. So the square timber that went down our rivers went to Quebec, was loaded on ships. That's why it was squared. So the logs would fit on tightly instead of a round log, which have spaces. And that was why the timber here was squared timber. Now the, the first uh, rash of timber came down the bond chair, um, not piloted by John Egan's men, but by McDonnell. Uh, McDonnell was from Iron Fryer and uh, it was coming down from Killaloo, and the Killaloo, Brennan's Creek, in tribute to uh, Golden Lake. And uh, that was a, a, a significant moment for at that time, that area was called Fort McDonnell, which was only later when a, a man who lived in Eganville, but worked for John Egan, but came from Killaloo in Ireland, decided he would like to call Fort McDonnell Killaloo. And that's how the name transitioned. Somebody from Ireland put the name on it and it stuck. And another name that stuck was Eganville because John Egan had the background for this whole area. He held the timber limits. He had bought the uh, farm that was called at first from uh, Wadsworth. Wadsworth had bought the holdings of Belanger. And you can see the Belanger name is French. The name of our river, Bonnechere, is French. And uh, instead of the influence of France, it was shifting, you see, to the British influence and the Irish influence, particularly with John Egan's <laughs> background from Lissabon in Ireland, West area, the Galway area. So he was very instrumental in helping to bring this area forward in an economic sense. He was on every river in the Ottawa Valley, and the Ottawa Valley is both sides of the Ottawa River, realized. Okay. So it was an important growth phenomenon. Now, I put on your chair, I don't know whether it's still there or not, just a, a brochure from Boncher Museum. If anybody didn't get one, let me know. And uh, you can take one and pass some on. The influence of Negan um, has spread and continued to this day. He at first uh, surveyed Eganville, but he had an early death, you realize that. He was 47 when he died. And he, uh, he had the survey done, but not registered. And his uh, survey of the area uh, took 10 years before it was processed through all the legalities. And then the name became an official name, even though everybody called it Eganville before that. And before it was called Eganville, it was called Fairfield Farm. And Fairfield Farm was the origin of the name Fairfields seniors building in Eganville. I happened to be on the board at the time and did a little push for a traditional name. So those are just a few little threads with John Egan, and there are many more threads. I even brought a few things with me in case, I don't know how heavily you're into genealogy, but I have one sheet that's the short version of the Egan tree. And then I have a, a longer one that we acquired from 
the Egan descendants visited the Egan Bull and a whole busload of them got off the main bridge and got the picture taken in front of the mural that's downtown. And uh, you probably have this somewhere, but if you'd like to have it, you're welcome to these. And I have another sheet and the photograph of his home in Aylmer. I made a trip to Aylmer uh, in the last five years, not sure which one. And I did see the home, it's still Quite there. significant. Place. Yes. Yeah. And it uh, was owned by several different people. And I think the Redemptorists owned it for a time even. And it's now, I think, a seniors uh, building. So that was Mount Pleasant. And I included in these sheets just a little further back when you've got a, an afternoon that you'd like to just check things out. There's another photograph, and this is one from Eganville. If you ever were in the Legion at Eganville, when you walk out, just lift your head and you will see John Egan's house. He built a house in Eganville just in case he might live here. But he was so busy in Aylmer, he never got around to living here. But his presence was always here. It was impressive that he was able to attract so many men. And a matter of fact, 1838, heavy into the square timber trade, John Egan and Company bought the farm of James Wadsworth on the Bonshire, which was later to become the village of Eganville. He married. And Margaret Gibson, they had three sons and five daughters. At the age of 46, he died of cholera on July 11th, 1857, at Quebec, who was buried in Aylmer, Lower Canada, on his estate called Mount Pleasant. So those are just a few background items if they're of use to you. Uh, you're welcome to them. I even have a, um, a letter from uh, Jeffrey Chambers, another descendant. Mm -hmm. And uh, he asked for a photo of John Egan, and I did send him one that looked very much like this one. Um, I, I'd appreciate any paperwork you have, uh, Preston. I would enjoy that because uh, I haven't read enough. But there is one other important factor that I should mention, and that is certain members of the family say, how sure of you that that portrait is John Egan. And I know that he had several sons and they feel that this portrait may be Sir Henry Egan. And maybe that's one of the reasons that the portrait was painted, I'm not quite sure. But in any case, uh, it might be John Egan or it might be Sir Henry Egan. Yes, I, I have another one that looks to me as though it were not quite as uh, touched up as a photograph of yeah. this one. Yeah. And uh, he has his hair is a little bushier, and there's a little bit of shadow here as well. But um, I chose this one because that's the one in the, most of the, the sources that I found. So you're welcome to these. I have copies myself. Fine. I feel um, like I just took a full year history course on Eganville. I, I didn't know so many of those facts, Preston. That was fascinating. It was just the beginning. <laughs> 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 but that's Another part one. <laughs> Preston's going to do well, very thank, much. Thank, thank you very much. Podcast. Wonderful. Are you, are you going to take them down to the arena or to yes. the museum? Yes. I don't think they care about the arena, but the arena on the brain now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Y'all. It was a pleasure. And it was a well swollen pool trying to, but I can uh, I can send you a survey for that. You haven't been in the JR booth yet. No, I haven't. I know. Just starting at the beginning. Thank you so Wait, just much. Just oh my gosh. This is you want me to carry that truly is. Thank you. Or you want us to drop it off? Um I'd love if you would. Yeah, are you yeah. taking today? Uh whatever is easiest. I uh just wanted to look after it. I don't want to rush it into the 
Yeah. No, I think that they should go back on it. Yes, like, I think so too. Oh, yeah. Maybe if I had I could return because I don't know how long this will be. Yeah. And uh, if it's in the office, I'm pretty sure. Well, okay. Right. Not. Thank you. Thanks, Preston. Thank you very much, Preston. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Preston. Okay, we're all like, like dancing. Come on in, Jason. You're up. Seriously, on camera, it made it this far. <laughs> you, you, you hit it. You oh, I was wondering who's the one going to be that knocked yeah. it over. Oh. <laughs> I could lie flat on the table. Mm. Might be better. Idea. Yeah, maybe we should. I don't trust us. Don't <laughs> yeah, know. maybe a janitor tapping and going by and it goes zip. No kidding. Bang. Yes, I feel much better about that. <laughs> Okay, Jason, you're up. Hello. Um, good news. Augsburg has been paved. Uh, they did a very good job. So, very good. Yeah. You want to get the lines painted on this long yet? Yes. Uh, they'll be here next uh, week of the 18th. Okay. Everything will be all line painted by then. There's a bit of a delay. They were short on paint. <laughs> but it was good. We had the weather we did, and the asphalt seemed to lay down pretty nice. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, everything mm -hmm. went very well. I was happy. It's great. Yeah. Drove over coming in here. Just did it. Yeah. Just give it. Oh, oh, there's speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got the senior senior uh, rules there, whatever you feel like going on that day, it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, Baptist, Church, Baptist Church has also been completed. We had a star fired and uh, we applied M gravel to it. And uh, it looks very good. There's no more potholes. And, Everyone seems to be very happy with that. Good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I haven't been up in a while, but uh, so how far did you get into it? Uh, we did two point or two two kilometers. Oh, so good. right to uh, where Larry Mulkey used to live, just before the Y. Right before the Y. Yeah. Oh, that's well. You extended that contract a bit, eh? That's great. Yes. Yeah. Good yeah. on you. Okay. Everything went really well up there, also. Um, MOE has completed an inspection at Snowdrifters, Ruby, and uh, Sandro. We haven't got the uh, report back yet, but uh, I'm thinking within the next couple of weeks we'll have that back. Okay. It seems to go very well. So. Is KB in love with that too, or just yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. They always have our input. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the snow removal contract. Um, I'm recommending that John Reiner, or council accept John Reiner for the quotation of 21 and 22 snow removal season. Uh, the price will remain the same as last year. Excellent. Very good. I have, I, have. I have two things for Jason, if I might. Sure. Number one, were you successful in hiring some new roads people? Yes. Could we meet them? Yeah. <laughs> Please. Well, I asked the same thing of Kevin McGrath. I just, I think that when, we, when we've got the amount of turnover that we have had in the last little while, it would be really nice for us to know who they are. Yes. That would be wonderful. Thank you, yes. Jason. Second thing, did you uh, make any headway with Tranquility Bay? Um, I, I did. I just met with uh, one of the uh, trail supervisors that looks after maintaining last week he was on holidays so i had a hard time getting hold of him but we met last week and uh, i have a bunch of information from him so it's um uh, i'm just gonna do a report up and i'll get back to you all perfect i just didn't want it to go off the radar yeah. um i had the opportunity to meet with uh chief jocko um last friday um just a lovely visit and she actually lives on the tract that they did and uh it's 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 quite something, although the speeding in front of her house is crazy. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I think that, um, yeah, I just don't want it to, I want it to be solved before the winter's over. Just, I know that they'll leave it open for the winter, but yeah. what happens after that? Yeah. Just a plan, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, the ATV club has their own grader, so they do the maintenance during the summer on okay. it. Uh, they have it in there two weeks ago and they graded everything up so it does look a lot better 
but there is still a lot of trees have to be cut. And, um, you know, there's the areas, once you get in there, probably uh, 500 meters. Dam. Well, the new ones didn't bother that dam. They get killed down there, so they went up a couple hundred yards upstream, and the, the water is almost up to the road again today. Yeah. <laughs> they are smart. Yes. Well, uh, is Calvin still tra trapping? He don't live that too far from there. Yes, I was going to give him a call today, actually, and mm -hmm. talk to him about that because we can't keep running. No, I know. <laughs> you know not that. Not a week ago, I think I met your backhoe coming in from out there, and I'll look at it, and they're yes. all filled back in again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just an endless battle if you don't get rid of them, right? So, yeah, yes, well, I'm not a trapper, but they used to say first good any month with an arrow, right? Or September going on October. It's not where it's that we're selling it. now. It's uh, it's if they pulled skin. everybody to pull your traps, we're skin. For, the for, for association is uh, everything has dropped so bad, but yeah, anyway, if we can get rid anyway. of them, we'll get rid of them. Perfect. Excellent. Thanks, Jason. Right. Thanks, Shane. Have yourself a good day. Oh, before you go, can I ask a question just for me? Sure. I just want to confirm what we were looking at this morning. Um, I there was a 911 sign put at the entrance of the property that we're severing, and now it's been moved. Do you know? Did you guys move it? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, I just I'll check with Mark. Thank you. Sorry. I just, I don't think we need to take a break right now, but but I didn't want to lose you. Wouldn't the county do that? I don't know. What is the number, Jeff? 1810. Oh, yes, it's the county. Yeah, the county would be. Oh, that's why. Yeah. yeah. So, so you would, okay. But I think we still order them here. Do we still in 1810? Yeah. Oh, I know who that's for. It's not for you. I no, oh, it, it was at our entrance and it got, anyway, the mystery's been solved. They might have just moved it back. I think the moves of mystery is that. Yeah. Well, that's anyway. good. Good prank to pull if they're pulling on you. <laughs> I had a resident that kept stealing this 420 sign. Oh, um, and that's just funny. a young teenager kept borrowing the 420 sign. Yeah, so of course. Pull out of their apartment. Anyway, thanks, Jake. I'm going to do a five minute break. Oh, you are. Okay. Thanks, yep. Jason. Because we got so much. <laughs> So I did, uh, we did, I, I, so we, oh, I was, I was, you were trying to telegraph with yeah, Tim, yeah. but he wasn't picking up what you were putting no, down. Picked it up, oh, <laughs> you mean your computer went, but you sitting in front of us? I know, see, well, it's unbelievable. I, I missed what Preston was talking about. No, no, just the very end of Jason's report. <laughs> Okay. Can you hear me, Dave? We're we're taking a five oh, minute break. No, when you face that way, can you I hear me? You have to listen. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay, I have Grace. to sit on his knee to hear him. Now, Preston, I can hear that guy. I can hear. <laughs>
Perfect. Well, that was good timing. Yeah. Okay. So we're back up and running. And uh, Dave, you're on deck. Are you there, Dave? I'm here. Good to see you, Dave. Good to see you. Um, so I don't really have much to uh, expand on with my report this uh, this month. Um, the schools will be visited. We're doing a modified fire prevention uh, program this year where we're doing outside uh, presentations. So it's, apparently the schools are not allowing um, assemblies yet, as of yet, So, or allowing groups of people to get together uh, inside the school. So uh, we're going to be doing that outside, which is great, um, good for us, and we can you know, cover more, more uh, grades um, in a shorter period of time, doing it that way, which is good. And I'm still waiting on... Um, some numbers for the expansion up in Foymount. Um, I did talk to the contractor last week and he is working on it. I just, uh, I'm hoping I'll have the numbers for your council meeting this month, hopefully. Um, and maybe I could sit in on that and, uh, and, and I'll send that stuff to you and I could sit on that in on that meeting, but um, not yet. They're, I guess, extremely busy right now. So um, he just hasn't had the time to get everything together for us, uh, but I'm sure it'll be coming soon. But but apart from that, uh, oh, everything seems to be going well. We had a, a little bit of a slower month net last month, uh, which is a good thing. Um, and, um, you know, we're, uh, we're renewing equipment. Uh, like I said in my report, I did order some new uh, forestry stuff just to upgrade and renew some of our older small equipment that we use for forestry. And it took forever to get the stuff, months and months um, uh, because, of, because of COVID delays. So um, that seems to be a challenge. So. Uh, anything that I need to order before the end of the year it, within this year's budget, I think I need to do it, be proactive and do it early. Uh, so it's not the middle, you know, the next spring before I get the stuff on, on this year's budget money. So anyway, apart from that, I, I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. No. All I got to say, Dave, by the looks of the numbers here, if you have a good couple of months, we're going to be well below last year's. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How many years have you been in this game? Hey. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, we, we don't talk like council chambers retract yeah, that yeah. statement. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. so you know who to call if things go wrong. <laughs> That's right. Things don't go wrong. Thanks, Dave. Right. Yeah. We're soon getting. Fall. Hopefully, you can make the best of the sunshine. Yeah, hopefully. All right. See you later. Bye. 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 Take care. Take, Take care. care. And uh, with that, <laughs> like it's even with the break, we're less than an hour here. Again. Crazy. Anybody else want to discuss before I wrap this up? No. Oh, Annette, so why happy. did I ask? <laughs> Why did I ask? <laughs> this is bad as Have I learned nothing? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think Annette's on the floor. Go ahead. I just want to make sure there's no questions about the medical building lease because I'll be bringing it back not tonight, but at the next meeting uh, by bylaw. So yeah, I was going to say yes. I see we're writing it again, and that's great. Okay. Everything's done. Well, especially now. Yes. Right, because one of the things that we told the minister was that. We were looking for bricks and mortar uh, funding, just staffing and laptops, that kind of thing. So the that um, that lease is very important if we want to bring in somebody for for mental health. Yes, and yeah. I'm with that. So I say that another uh, organization, say mental health, gets put under. Um, will that be under the same like under the lens like the West Champlain Group, or is that? A different subsection. No, no it's, it is actually under the West Champlain. So, no, and the, yeah, and the reason I asked is just that if we had to create a new no. appendix or subsection into the lease mm -hmm. because of that, sometimes with your commercial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So no, that's good. Yeah. Besides, that, it's pretty straightforward, and yeah, yeah. Well, that's they, what it is. It's good. I I went away from it not too long, but it did have people coming down from West Champlain once or twice a month, dealing with youth that time. Uh, Robbie Dean was using yeah, it, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, this is actually the stakeholders are actually um, Connect Well, which is our Beechburg, yeah, Cobden, yeah. Eganville, uh, West Champlain, uh, Renfrew Victoria, and uh, the Phoenix Center. Mm -hmm. So those are the stakeholders that are putting in the ask for for the West Champlain that's here. Um, do we know 
how much of our residents utilize the services there? I can get you those numbers. I'm just curious. The, um, the only challenge, Brent, is that um, a lot of them have our, have our postal code, but they're actually in North Algona. Yeah. So there's a, I can get you the numbers, but it'll be a bit convoluted. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it is being used and used heavily. And we are oh, I know. hoping used. that, you know, it'll, one of the things is we're trying to destigmatize mental health and addiction, right? And it, the, if you go into that building, nobody's going to know, are you there to see a nurse practitioner or a mental health professional? So I think that's very important. And that's the model we're looking at um, for each of the buildings. Do you know that they get rid of that cavity up there that you had to have a Pembroke doctor to use this? Or, there, or, it's, or it's modified. Yeah. You yeah. still have to have a Pembroke doctor or, or beyond their their list just of doctors on, their roster, yes. uh, on the list of doctors yeah, before you yeah. can use it because yeah. uh I, I know someone that has a husband and wife his wife can use it but the husband can't so yeah which is sad it's too bad because they're both residents of Montreal. Valley so. I didn't know that was happening until we're five minutes to hit the stage to announce it in the church basement oh yeah and I remember that day right well down. that was a bait and switch really yeah. So. But anyway, it's yeah, it's being heavily utilized, and uh, people appreciate the nurse practitioner models. So it's great. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I don't see any questions from the media over there. <laughs> <laughs> so our next meeting date is uh, well, it is uh, October the. Yes. Yeah. Some book. Tuesday it's, in October. It's 14 <laughs> days from now. The, the last relaxing meeting before deer hunt. <laughs> yes. Okay. Can I get a <laughs> someone <laughs> to adjourn? Okay. Jack, on favor. Perfect. No closed sessions. Good. No, we're already adjourned, so it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your smiling face.